What's good, y'all, man? We back. We with another video, man. How y'all doing? Y'all doing great today. I'm um, saying we got seven corrupt cops. They got caught. Um, this is crazy, though, for, like, it's a whole lot of corruption going on. You, you know, and, like, police and stuff like that. And mainly we're back in the old days, but it's still probably going on, so we can see the video, man. William Demby, oh, former Lorraine, Lorraine County, County Sheriff's, Sheriff's Correctional Correction Officer, and his wife, Holly Demby, Demby seemed like the average blended family. family. They had a four-year-old son together and three children from Holly Demby's previous marriage. However, on August 11th, after a heated argument, police received a call from Demby, where he calmly told them he had nearly beheaded his wife. During the argument, Demby punched his wife, then helped her clean up downstairs before returning to his bedroom for a combat-style knife with a seven-inch blade. He said almost beheaded her wife. Before she tried to escape by climbing out a second-story bathroom window. After Holly went out the window, Demby went downstairs and stabbed her twice more. During the trial, his attorneys argued that Holly had an adulterous affair and claimed that she was emotionally abusing her husband for years before he snapped and killed her. Ten days after her murder, Holly's mother, Cheryl Folds, admitted to destroying any scientific evidence that confirmed her daughter's affair. He was found guilty of murder, felony assault, and domestic violence, and sentenced for a total of 20 years to life in prison. It's not news that the role of law enforcement is to prevent crime and civil disorder. However, for some, these are the very body of persons executing the crime. Baltimore Police Department is one such case. Their crimes are like so notorious. And like this, this is really a bad look on police. I haven't like have a corrupt officer, but like you feel me? Like it's just a bad look. A book on it was published. And, later on, a show was adapted. Prior to this, they'd been lauded as some of the best gun cops in the city, seizing tons of illegal firearms every month, and demonstrating a work ethic that is beyond reproach. In the words of one supervisor, Wayne Jenkins was a rising star in the department because of his ability to regularly bring in huge seizures of drugs and guns. Jenkins joined Baltimore's police department in 2003, first becoming a beat cop two years old. in the streets of Baltimore. It was in 2007 that Jenkins became a part of the Gun Trace Task Force, a new unit of plainclothes officers focused on targeting suspected criminals believed to have big supplies of guns and drugs in a bid to reduce the city's high murder rate. However, the focus on quantity rather than quality led Jenkins and the seven other GTTF officers to start planting evidence, take money from the homes they invaded, and even resell the drugs they seized back onto the streets. On March 1st, 2017, Sergeant William Jenkins and six of his subordinate officers from the Gun Trace Task Force walked into Baltimore's police department's internal affairs building, believing they were there to clear up a minor complaint about a damaged vehicle. But instead, they were arrested. It turned out that federal agents had the unit under surveillance for months and had accumulated a wealth of evidence showing the officers were robbing citizens, filing hundreds of hours of overtime they never worked, stealing drugs, and even selling illegal firearms back on the streets. Planted evidence on people. So even that's crazy, bro. Jenkins signed a plea agreement in 2017 that detailed seven robberies that he protected. So basically, they playing both sides of the. They playing both sides of the ball. <laughs> you giving them drugs and then you trying to arrest them for the drugs you gave them, and you what? That's that's so Tennessee weird. Bro. In, along with other members of the unit, as well as his drug dealing partnership with Donald Stepp, the former bail bondsman and cocaine dealer who testified at trial in September 2021, Jenkins spoke with BBC journalist Jessica Lusenhop from behind bars, and he claimed he never took money from Baltimore citizens. He says, I did give drugs to Donnie for the last couple of years I was police, but I didn't take people's money because then they would know you were dirty. Explaining the tactics of the GTTF, he also said, this was a saying we state, don't let probable cause stand in the way of a good arrest. 
If you've got to lie about what you've seen or what you heard or what you've witnessed, as long as he's dirty, he's got the drugs, and he's got the guns, and he did the crime. Just get it. When his case went to trial on January 5th, 2018, Jenkins pled guilty to one count of racketeering, two counts of robbery, one count of destruction, alteration, or falsification of records, and four counts of deprivation of rights under color of law. Jenkins was given a 25-year prison sentence on June 7th, 2018, which he is currently in the midst of serving at a federal prison in Kentucky. As a leader of the unit, he received the longest prison sentence. But Jenkins isn't even the most psychopathic cop in this video. That award goes to the next officer. But first, if you're liking this video, it would be great if you could subscribe as we're trying to hit 1,000 subscribers before the end of this year. Anyway, back to the cases. Michael, Michael Dockrow was a police, was a police officer, officer that swore to uphold the law, but, but disgraced it entirely in his vengeful plots. Dockrow was angry with his then-captain Mark Anderko, who switched his shift and ordered him to undergo a fitness for duty evaluation with a psychologist after his 11th excessive force complaint. Because of this, he decided to set fire to Andreko's home while his family were inside asleep in May 2013. He also decided- So he said, he set the house on fire while his family was in the, I was saying, what? Bro, what is wrong with, bro, what is wrong with people, bro? Yeah, a woman who worked in the police department, slashed her tires, and accessed the department's computer database illegally about the incident. Additionally, Don Rowe faced accusations of buying and keeping marijuana and paraphernalia in his police van, along with prohibited weapons, including a blackjack and brass knuckles. In total, Dontro has had 40 guilty convictions in the municipal court, 18 of which occurred prior to being a police officer, and the remaining 22 while he was a police officer. Judge Jimenez said, adding that the convictions do not account for the five additional superior court convictions that he was being sentenced for. Dontro was found guilty and received 20 years for attempted murder, a first-degree crime, and 10 years for aggravated arson. For these, these, are former, these are former police officers. At Andrico's home. The prison terms will run concurrent. Dotro was also sentenced to 10 years for official misconduct, 5 years for conspiracy to tamper with a witness, and 18 months for conspiracy to retaliate. He will serve 5 years of parole supervision once released. Gemini's also ordered Dontro to have no contact with the Andurco family and another victim. Tonight, he is headed to prison. Action News reporter Bob Mayo with the evidence used to lock him away. In 2009, Donald Solomon became the police chief of the borough of East Washington, Pennsylvania, after a decade as a part-time officer. Around that time, Solomon and his wife divorced after more than 15 years of marriage. It was after this that his behavior had attracted the attention of federal authorities and caused them to engage in an unidentified confidential informant described by Solomon as an erstwhile friend to probe Solomon's criminal tendencies. On June 30th and July 1st, 2011, the confidential informant met with Solomon to discuss providing security services for an unidentified third person. They discussed providing security for a four kilogram cocaine deal for which they would each be paid $500 per kilogram. On July 27th, 2011, Solomon and the confidential informant met with the third person, Joseph who was really an undercover FBI agent posing as a drug trafficker. At the meeting, Solomon agreed to provide protection for a multi-kilogram cocaine shipment, and also agreed to wear a the FBI, the FBI, they be doing so. The staged drug deal took place in a church parking lot in East Washington. Solomon had a shotgun, an AR-15 rifle, and a 9mm handgun with him as he sat inside his marked police cruiser with the CI. Soon after, Joseph and a fellow undercover agent engaged in another fake drug deal, while Solomon looked on from his police car. In total, Solomon was paid $8,800 in connection with the drug transactions. Solomon was indicted in three counts of extortion. He he pled guilty in January 2013 to three counts of extortion and was sentenced in June of that year to a minimum of 11 years to a maximum of 14 years in prison. In 2017, he received a reduced prison sentence from a federal judge who acknowledged that Solomon went beyond ordinary measures while in prison to get his life back on track.
Marco Marino was an FBI officer who came to the United States in 1991 when he was 12 with no money and no home. In 2007, he became a U.S. citizen. He overcame a great deal of adversity in his life and stayed out of trouble despite a very rough upbringing. When asked why law enforcement, Marino stated, to help give back to my community. John Kaczkowski was raised by his parents in Venezuela until he was seven years old and moved to the United States in 1996 when the climate in Venezuela began to change for the worse. His father was also a U.S. citizen. He wanted a law enforcement career, believing it suited his personality, and he was made for the job. His goal was to work in either narcotics, burglary, or robbery units. Despite both their passions for their jobs, they were discovered to be trafficking fentanyl, a powerful synthetic opioid analgesic that is 50 times stronger than heroin and 100 times stronger than morphine. Hey, I heard you like, who was I heard you dispose, you dispose of fentanyl, like you, your whole body just lock up. Like you just, you feel me on the, like you in shock or something. 45, conspired with Kutkowski, who was 33, to traffic the lethal drug. Moreno tried to recruit a confidential informant to traffic drugs with him. He promised law enforcement protection to the individual and said he could intervene if other law enforcement agencies attempted to investigate the confidential informant. In March, April, May, August, and September of 2021, Moreno accepted a total of $44,000 in cash in exchange for protecting the safe transport of at least 27 kilograms grams of cocaine. Unbeknownst to Marino, there was no actual cocaine, and each of the transactions was controlled by federal law enforcement. During the transports of the purported cocaine, Kutkowski made himself available for any calls that Marino might need, including to other law enforcement officials to protect the safe transportation of the cocaine. In June and August of 2021, Marino allegedly distributed approximately 7.5 kilograms of fentanyl that Kokoschke provided to him. Kakashki was identified to be a cooperating witness as someone who had previously been an informant for the narcotics officer, and the relationship had turned into one where the witness was trafficking drugs. The witness said Kakashki used a Mickey Mouse marking on kilograms of cocaine when he provided them to the witness. The same marking that was found on at least four of the 7.5 kilograms Marino provided to the informant. John Kaczkowski, 33, entered a guilty plea that includes forfeiture of cash, 21 firearms, a 2016 Cadillac Escalade, a 2021 Chevrolet Corvette, and a $500,000 money judgment against him. Marino, on the other hand, pled guilty in March to drug conspiracy and bribery charges. He is awaiting sentencing. He faces a maximum sentence of 10 years in prison for the bribery charge and a sentence of at least 10 years up to life in prison for the... I understand. Why like why they might do it, but like you might always, you might always just like I understand that we want to like be undercover police and you know what I'm saying do do and not act like they're not gonna ever get caught. But eventually you are gonna get caught, bro. So you I mean you probably get away with it one or twice or after like three or four times they they it really on to you, bro, the whole time. For the fentanyl distribution charge. For, For most of his four years, years as a Memphis, Memphis police officer, Arthur C. IV financed, financed his dream of becoming a record producer by stealing large sums of money and drugs from dealers whose reward was not being arrested. Arthur C. was a Memphis police officer. He grew up in Orange Mount, joined the Navy, and then, on July 19, 2001, he became a Memphis police officer. He was fired in January of 2005 after state robbery charges were filed, but he continued the shakedowns by directing Former, former colleagues, colleagues still, still on the, the force, force to make the stops. Three, Three other, other Memphis, Memphis police officers, officers Anton Owens, Owens, Andrew Hunt, Hunt and Alexander Johnson, as well as other associates and relatives of C's, were involved in the conspiracy. His primary goal was the high life, Parker said. He wanted to be a rap record producer and, in fact, High Life Incorporated was going to be the name of his record company. He wanted to raise money for his rap label, so he'd get... So he's... So he sold drugs and all the other just, just just to be a rap, a recording like person like what? I don't understand why people do this. Dealers to set up drug deals, and then he and other officers would rob them. The prosecutor said that after taking drugs, money, cell phones from the dealers, he would then imagine getting robbed by the police, and that he wasn't going to arrest them. Seize was the principal co-conspirator. Seize's convictions are based on 14 separate incidents. The incidents follow the same basic plan. Seize would arrange for a drug buy or drug sell using drugs taken in a previous incident, using a non-officer contact as the front person. 
person, as, as the deal was occurring, occurring either sees or one of his fellow co-conspirator co officers would arrive at the scene to make a purported arrest and seize the money and drugs involved in the deal. The participants would then be released and seize and all his conspirators would split the proceeds without reporting the incident. In November or December of 2003, Seas arranged for his cousin to set up a drug deal with Dewan Nard Brooks. Acting all these drug deals, deal, man. Seas observed the deal in an unmarked police car while wearing plain clothes. When Brooks' SUV pulled up next to Seas' cousin's vehicle, Seas radioed for Owens to come to the scene in uniform in a patrol car. Owens approached the two vehicles with his weapon drawn and removed both Brooks and Seas' cousin from their vehicles. Operating under Seas' instructions to make it real, Owens roughed up Seas' cousin and placed him in the back of the patrol car. Meanwhile, Seas searched Brooks' SUV and found a bag containing a half kilogram of cocaine, which Seas placed in the front seat of his unmarked vehicle. Owens also seized $11,000 from Brooks, then released him without an arrest. Once Brooks left, Seas' cousin was released from Owens' patrol car, and the drugs were dropped off at a South Memphis house, where they were later used to set up another drug sale. Owens, Seas, and Officer Johnson then split the $11,000 in cash. After several dealers finally complained to the police department, a months-long investigation was conducted that ended with the arrest of Seas in an April 2006 sting. Seas' 44 counts of civil rights, narcotics, robbery, and firearm offenses led to one of the most extreme sentences for civil rights and other violations that did not involve any deaths. He was sentenced to a prison term of life plus 255 years by Chief Judge John P. McCullough in Memphis, Tech. Thing is, bro, he be the police, the bro, like, boy, well, not all of them, but you know what I'm saying? Like, this right here, like, it's just crazy. I, I bet it's more, it's more of this going on for, in the whole United States, bro. Like, come on, man. But hey, bro, um, you really just can't do nothing. FBI, FBI, only people that really can like, you know what I'm saying, take heed to the situation. Um, but hope you guys like the video, man. That was seven corrupt cops. See y'all tomorrow, man.